Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Evening Chapel on Sunday, May 3rd. I hope you're well. I hope you've had a great weekend. I hope this new week we are now in is off to a great start as we move from April to May into the second half of this very, very different Brooks School Spring we are experiencing together. Tonight, uh, to begin chapel in my ongoing series of Brooks School and Ashburn Chapel Bits and Pieces of History, I want to say a little bit about Theodore Caldwell Janeway, class of 1943. As you can see here uh, on the left wall of the chapel as you enter the building, uh, he is remembered uh, in this way. Born in 1926, died far too young at age 42 in 1968, and that family and friends of his remembered him with this quote, he had the quality of gladness. There's also this plaque on one of the beams in this part of the section that you can see right here, and it reads, this memorial alcove was given in 1970 by his family and friends. I didn't know much about Mr. Janeway and wanted to learn a little bit about him. I learned that he was from Oyster Bay, New York. I learned that he started at Brooks in the fall of 1937 as a first former or seventh grader. I learned that he was a school prefect, and I learned that he was inducted into the Cum Laude Society in the spring of 1943, just like members of the class of 2020 will be inducted into Cum Laude on Wednesday of this week. I also think a lot about this chapel that we're in so frequently and the fact that it was intended to be a temporary building. And then the Great Depression hit in the 1930s and building a new chapel was not in the cards for the school. And thankfully, 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 this magnificent space behind me endured over time because it is the quintessential Brooks School building. It's been added on to and enhanced and strengthened to accommodate a growing school, a strengthening school, an improving school over time, most recently in 2014 with a significant and comprehensive renovation. But I'm always mindful when I'm in here of what so many have done before us to make this space in our school possible. And in his own way, by virtue of the life he led and by virtue of the care his family and friends had for him and for the school, they added onto this space what was once a smaller alcove on the left-hand side of the building, but gave to it in a way that allowed those who followed to enjoy it. So tonight, as we get a new week started, I'm grateful for Mr. Janeway. I'm grateful for his family. I'm grateful for his friends. And I continue to be grateful for all, including all of us, who give to what happens in this space in ways that strengthen it, give it more purpose, and allow those that follow us to enjoy it more and more and more. I hope you have a great night, a great week. Take good care, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Our opening hymn is Love Will Guide Us. Mr. Humphreyville will play it on the chapel organ. You and your family are invited to sing along. The words will appear.
first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The second reading is from Eleanor Brown, a contemporary writer and life coach who lives in California. You thought it would break you in two, but it made you twice as strong. The third reading is a classic poem by the Japanese poet Kobayashi Issa. O snail, climb Mount Fuji, but slowly, slowly. Hi, everybody. Our readings today are very short. Kobayashi's poem is eight words. He could have written a thousand pages about endurance. Instead, he gives us the image of a snail climbing a mountain. Jesus of Nazareth could have written volumes about the power of love to transform us. He didn't write anything. Instead, he accepted the cross as his witness to the power of love. We're in the midst of a health crisis. We're swamped with words about it. In some cases, it seems like the less understanding, the more talk. St. Paul and Eleanor Brown have a message for times like this. St. Paul says, love endures all things. Eleanor Brown says, we may think this will break us in two, but once we're through it, we'll find we're twice as strong. May God bless you. May God's spirit of love be with you all through this week. Amen. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. I invite you to join me in prayer. Great Spirit of love, be present with us and hold us together in our hearts, even though we are distant from one another. 
In this time when our lives are challenged by unfamiliar limits, give us patience and endurance to stay the course, with sure confidence that in the end, you will lead us to victory. Turn us away from pride and self-centeredness. Give us the humility to trust in your unchanging love. Open our hearts to the needs of those around us and give us the will to love others as you have loved us. Amen.